back with 50 and 50, 50 vlogs in 50 days. Huge thanks to Netflix for support and putting these together and we're really getting momentum and a topic that's very interesting, lameness. Uh, we covered lameness in sheep. Uh, lameness is supposed to, in cattle, but particularly I suppose the dairy cow is will be more focused on the dairy cow because I suppose she's under more functional pressure in the role that she plays in the farming system. Um, and again, you might have heard me talk about optimizing biology, but it's really about understanding the key biology, anatomy, and behaviors of cows, and how we can eliminate lameness. Why is it an issue? Of course, it's very obvious. Stress, pain, massive implications on performance and welfare. And you know, keeping cows in our herds from a productive point of view, you know, your, your, your heifer will produce 25, 30% less than your third, fourth, and fifth lactation animal. And um, it just makes absolute sense to minimize issues to kind of take our cows out of our herds. And lameness is a big one. And even if we think about right now on Irish farms, fertility and breeding is occurring, will a lame cow go in calf? Will she be bullying? And what happens a lame bull? Uh, just to give you an example, massive impact on fertility uh, on farms and sucker farms. So again, we just need to have a target in our head. And the real challenge with lameness is we really need to get better at what we consider a lame cow. So a cow with a leg up, uh, non-weight bearing lameness. I mean, that's a chronically lame cow. That's a cull cow. Uh, often, you know, they're very hard to get back. We need to be mindful that when you go in and look at it, I'll talk a bit about it, um, that there's a lot more lame cows probably than we allow for on our farms. And we need to look at the, even the mild lameness because that's telling us something and we, we need to react to it. Okay, so I suppose everybody knows the shape of a cow's foot, but just to reinforce it, um, your, your, your foot here, the coronary band, the wall, the outside wall, the foot will grow down from here, um, six millimeters a month, so it takes a long time. So that's the outer shell of the hoof. And then where we see a lot of the issues are on the surface of the hoof. Again, that sole is quite thin and it grows quite slowly, but that's important because if we see issues on our sole, like bleeding, it can be an indication of issues two months previously, which just goes to show that if we can optimize uh, the biology and reduce these down, we can really um, impact a long-term lameness. So th what I'm trying to say there is the cows that we see lame with sole bruising in particular, that might have been uh, six, six to eight weeks before that, that the problem originally started. And then we have a very important junction here where the, the outside horn meets the sole, the soft sole, and that's the white line. You'll see that inside your hoof when you turn it upside down. And that can be white line disease, again, can be a pressure disease. We'll talk about that. Remember, inside this hoof, there's a little bone, the pedal bone, and it's attached here at two points, uh, very narrow points in the front. And on the bottom here, there's a soft cushion, including a fat cushion, but the cells here. So we have a soft layer underneath the sole, and this is absolutely critical. Um, and it's no wonder we see lameness and see issues we do because that, that is a sensitive area, particularly in the dairy cow. And of course, it's down to weight. The cow comes forward from her back legs. It's the outside claw carries a lot of the weight. That's why we see most of the weight. 65% of the weight been borne by the back legs and, and the outside claw, we see, tend to see more problems. Okay, so when we talk about lameness, it can be infectious lameness or mechanical lameness. Now, when we're out grazing at the moment, and typically a lot of the lameness you see, I call it functional or mechanical lameness, accounts for 90% of the lameness. So, when we talk about infectious, smart, larus, fowls, but in, you know, functional mechanical lameness to the surface. So, what we've got to do is if we know that this is a sensitive uh, tissue here, the sole, the white line, we have to understand okay, have we got a lameness issue and how do we do that? The only way you can do that and the best way to do it for the dairy herd is mobility scoring. So if you look at times for doing that, if you're bringing cows in in the morning, you have a notepad down, you freeze brand and you're just scoring cows and you're looking at the weight bearing of the cows as they move past you. And there's a scale between zero and four. Now it's quite obvious you're four, that cow is chronically lame, uh, holding her leg up very lame. We need to get in here at the ones and the twos and the threes, particularly these, and pick up the mildly lame cases earlier. And we'll talk about that a bit on treatment. But ultimately, we've got to figure out which cows in our herd are lame. It's not a case of you have two very severely lame cows every two months and you pull them out and that's how you look at your overall herd if you really want to tackle lameness. And then look at what's causing it. So if we lift up the feet, and you need to be, like, you know, this is something in practice I wasn't uh, well equipped for, and um, I didn't have the equipment. So again, if I didn't have the equipment, I wasn't inclined or wanting to do it as a vet. 
Um, so you need to have the equipment if you're if your vet is doing it. There's some very good technicians doing uh, hoof pairing as well. It's something I think farmers themselves need to get the basics right. I think it's a because we need to act fast with lameness is having your hoof knack, your hoof knife, a sharpener, having the base equipment to lift up the feet and look underneath. So if it's on the on the outside, if it's white line disease, if it's abscesses here, it's where that wall and the sole meet, it's an area of pressure, is a white line disease. And then we look at sole ulcers, which are quite obvious, and then sole ble ble bleeding or bruising are probably the other two. So they're functional ones, and they can tell us a lot about um, what's happening. So white line to me tends to be talking about a lot to do with pressure and the movements of the claw. If you think the, the hoof wall or the wall is attached to the hoof like this, if we're moving pressure, what, why are you getting white line? Again, sole is more to do with pressure. What's happening on that small little layer? Okay, so again, if we're getting lame, it's just a little bit about treatment. Early treatment is really, really important. Early treatment, and for functional mechanical issues, we can look at pairing S to clean up that hoof, but if it's inflamed, if it's bruised, and if it's uh, bleeding and sore, think about just basic medicine. We need to relieve the pressure off it. You would bandage it if it's human, but the type of tissue it is, we've got to take that impact off. So blocks work really well. So a block on the, on the healthy side, balanced up, allowing that tissue to heal, and um, pairing it back to, you know, for if it's drops or abscesses, and then most of this is inflammation. And I've talked about anti-inflammatories in a previous video. Anti-inflammatories, you know, I, I always I found this very um, strange and I, I didn't think about it, that when I went out on a farm, people were treating cows, but they were treating the lame cows with a, maybe a shot of um, covering antibiotics. Um, when in fact, most of this is mechanical lameness, it's inflammation. So anti-inflammatories and blocks and good pairing is a must for these treatments, particularly if there's a lot of tissue damage. I would say pairing and anti-inflammatories and a don't, don't spare the blocks because they allow that tissue to heal. And that is my, uh, my just very simple tips on, um, on lameness. Okay, so that's treatments. Let's think about um, control. If we know that information, there's a really, really good, the, for functional lameness, it's a pressure disease. It's pressure on the foot or pressure on the cow. And I mean, when I heard that first, I was the, again, it was, listen to experts like Neil Chesterton, um, you know, pressure, it's a pressure disease. Pressure on the foot or pressure on the cow. How do we control it? Is reducing pressure. So if we're seeing a lot of this disease, again, I keep saying to you, if you're seeing disease, it's a, often a manifestation of management or husbandry or nutrition that needs to change. Ask why. So, in a grazing system, and apologies that this is very busy, but typically if you look at a cow's day, she's out of grass, she has to come into be milk twice. There's a couple of really important things from a pressure aspect. Think about pressure on the cow, first of all. She walks at two and a half to three kilometers an hour. So if you get in with a quad or a dog here and you speed up that cow, she, her front foot goes first, followed by her back foot in the same place. She picks her spot. Now, if I push cows too hard, they lift their heads up, and they're not looking where they're placing their feet. They, this is when they get bruising, stone damage. Okay, that's, that's, that's one thing. Also, the surface that they're walking on, the length of the walk obviously is important. The more, if you're walking cows two kilometers in a day, uh, there's the challenge there, okay? But we can overcome that. I think, I feel we can overcome that by not, not putting cows under pressure, uh, never pushing cows hard on the way in or out to milking, the surface that they're walking on then becomes important, so the camber and the actual layers of the surface. If they're walking through muddy roads where they can't see, putting their foot down on the stone, this again is really important. So that's kind of pressure on the cow, the surface. You think about one important area is where they transition into the, the collecting yard, you know, getting a step up or having a transition zone with, um, uh, what's that stuff, astroturf, something like that, or wood chip, to, to, so that they're not bringing stones from the gravel walkway uh, all, all the way in onto, excuse me, uh, bringing stones from the, from the walk onto the milking parlor, the hard concrete, because concrete is our big challenge with cows. We don't want them standing, we want to minimize standing time in concrete. So when they're transitioning, uh, look at the tracks, and then when you get into the collecting yard for cows, and this is this time of year, um, if cows are standing and walking, flowing through the, the, the milking parlor, in and out, without any other undue pressure, then there'll be less pressure on the foot. 
But we see a lot of white Lyme disease, again, it's from a lot of twisting and turning, particularly uh, on concrete. And if you look at these, you'll hear that cracking noise inside. That wasn't a very good crack. That cracking noise inside in the collecting yard, uh, cows jostling and busting. You know, cows have a social hierarchy. They'll move in in groups and they'll move through and move out. The less twisting and turning of the feet that you get in that situation, the less challenges you have on white Lyme disease. So just looking, and again, flow of your cows through the power are all very important again if we look at that very thin layer and pressure look at the time that's spent milking so a cow will have a daily budget i talked about that in optimized biology but if a cow is spending longer than she should be standing on concrete because milking times are long she has a bigger risk of um particularly i suppose pressure coming on that foot so um, and if then if we have jostling in the yard it can even be under more pressure if you think about heifers coming in, first lactation animals coming into that group and trying to uh, look at space and hierarchies, you can have even more. It's really interesting when you actually start looking at it. There's the, the, then you look at the, if you have high traffic areas and high areas where there's a lot of twisting and pressure in the claw, um, using rubber to, to reduce down that impact, that all makes sense and it's a cow flow thing. So there is significant risks and they're kind of simple-ish um, when you look at them, but you know, like a ro ro if you're getting a lot of lame lameness out of pasture roadways or something, you look at and cow flow. Now they're a long-term investment, but if you look at a lameness case costing you on average between 200 to 250 euros, um, it makes sense, and it can be even more. The lameness can cost even more. Okay, so cow flow. We look at you know, do ten cows get lame because it is fat pad? I think if we look at it here, ten cows have less cushioning in the foot. We always want to make sure that and optimize that you know that, that, that cows aren't tame. And then if you have lame cows, of course, maybe they just go tame because they're lame. So that debate, I think, is still raging on a little bit. But I think it's important to remember that the, this layer down here is a layer of cells and a very thin fat pad. That it's just a shock absorber. So we want to make sure body condition is okay at herd level. But the main thing we want to do, and this particularly applies indoors, is standing time of our cows and pressure on the feet, twisting and turning. So that becomes very important looking at the environment, looking at the feed face. Again, this is somewhere where they're standing a lot. You'll see heifers, uh, particularly smaller heifers at the feed face, they're, they'll have these screw shaped uh, horns. Again, if there's a lot of twisting and they're stretching out to get fed, if you're spending a lot of time standing, if you're not maximizing line times, Cows are standing on concrete. Again, that's putting pressure. So again, looking at the daily time budget, I really think technology here, I'm really excited about technology uh, alerting us to normal behaviors and time. Because if I think about the sole of the foot and it grows, and if I think about damage done to the sole because of excess standing time, then I mightn't see the impacts of that for six weeks. That I, if I know the technology is telling me that the cow is not uh, standing excessively longer than she should be, or the herd is doing things they shouldn't be, I can really get ahead of things like lameness. That's my own opinion. So it's about reducing pressure indoors, about reducing standing time damage, and again, looking at the environment that the twisting and turning of the claws is minimized by allowing space and social behaviors to, 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 to be allowed to be acted out. So that's control. So particularly for, at the moment, if the key thing is we can actually look at this. We can look at how many lame cows, we can look at what's causing it, and then we can go back and look at the system and remembering that it, mechanical lameness is to do with pressure. So um, we can look at ways that we can eliminate that, and it could be you know, putting the quad bike from second gear to first gear, or leaving the quad bike inside, get the exercise out to walk in and out. You know, that, that young dog, pushing cows faster than it should, you know, a stretch of roadway that's really, you know, bad surface, transitioning the cows into the milk part, looking at the flow, looking at the collecting yard, maybe not being as aggressive with that backing gate. These are all things we can do for cows to help with lameness. Uh, a bit of a longer one than normal. Um, I suppose now that I'm talking about pressure on cows, pressure on feet, um, I suppose a very simple one. Um, a lot of people I talk to are feeling pressure at the moment, and I don't think anyone should hold that pressure up because pressure on humans, pressure on animals is never any good. So if you are under pressure, I suppose it's a hard thing sometimes to do, but don't forget to talk. Um, keep up the good work, everybody on farm, and uh, happy safe farming.